So, you want the best thousand dollar gaming PC. And oh, I see you've heard about the VRAM crisis too. Well, you've definitely come to the right place, because you don't really want to be limited by VRAM when gaming. So let's list down what you want. You want a modern processor and a platform, fast graphics card with more than 10 gigabytes of VRAM, and of course, we want a stable system. Okay, I gotcha. And as always, boys, we'll be sticking with the same build criteria as with all our previous build guides, which means all parts must be brand new, there must be no use parts, and all parts must be available at the time of recording. And for those who are new to the channel, we're basing everything off Amazon US, but for everyone else who lives outside the region, feel free to use this as a guide. And like before, if you have any questions, just pop it down in the comment section. We do read them. Don't forget the YouTube notifications. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's start off with our processor and what we pick is that Core i5 12400F. This is a modern processor boys, 6 cores with 12 threads. Boast up to 4.4 GHz and is in the Alder Lake architecture. It has 65 watts TDP. Performance is decent. It's obviously not the fastest in terms of single core performance but we should be fine. I mean, why this? Why not get a 13th generation instead? Well, that's simple. This one's cheap at $157 and we're pairing this with a cheap P660 motherboard. If you're going for the 13th gen processor, you would need a B760 motherboard and that would be a little bit more expensive. Speaking of motherboard, we're pairing this with the ASRock B660M Pro RS. RS means Race Sport Edition and I don't know why that they picked this one. Anyway, this board has decent performance. It has an 8 power face design on our VRM. It comes with heat sinks as well on the VRM and one of the M.2 slots. Well, speaking of the M.2, there's two of them. One is a PCIe 4.0 and one is a PCIe 3.0. It has three addressable RGB ports here, here, and here. But the main thing about this board is that it's cheap. That's 95 bucks, boys. Just drop in our 12400F and we got a decent combo but why this combo you say well as i mentioned it's cheap and this is a good starter kit i mean later down the track you can update the bios of this board and you're free to upgrade to whatever cpu within the 12th and 13th generation that you'd want yeah so you've got that flexibility later on that track this will be a good starter kit so we've also decided to swap out the stock cooler to this one the thermal right assassin x120 it's uh the stock cooler of the core i5 12400f isn't very good this one over here is just cheap it's easy it has decent performance and it only would cost us 19 dollars 90 that's a no-brainer boys decent performance for 20 bucks yeah just bag this one and for our memory, we picked nothing special here. The theme group, the Force Vulcan Z 16 gigabyte kit. It comes with 3600 megahertz or mega transfers per second. Speeds, standard timings of 1822, 22, 42. It's cheap at 37 dollars and Nothing fancy really. You can always upgrade to more RAM later on, but we picked this one because we're sticking to a budget and it does the job. 16 gigabyte may be fine, but like I said, you've got flexibility later on. If your use case requires more than 16 gigabytes, you can always upgrade to more RAM later on. But for this one, it will be a good starter kit. For our storage, we selected a 1TB NVMe here, and that's the Crucial P3 1TB PCIe Gen 3. It's a good budget storage. It's only priced at $45.99. 3500 megabytes per second sequential reads. It has black color, has limited five year warranty, and the SSD endurance is about 220 terabytes written. So that's fine. I mean, this one's cheap and it works. So we'll just go with this one. Before we carry on, if you guys watching this video is interested in building a PC over the next few months, we do these build guides on different price points every month. So hit that subscribe button if you want to be up to speed with the best value PC specs. We do all the research for you so you wouldn't need to spend more time researching or googling. Anyway, let's go back to for our graphics card, we've selected the MSI Gaming Radeon RX 6800 non-XD. This is a triple fan design, 16 gigabytes of GDR6 RAM with a 256-bit bus. 
This card is from the RDN A2 architecture, which is totally fine. It comes with three display ports, one HDMI at the back, and it comes with a bundled support bracket as well. And this one's only at $519. Not a bad deal. So this GPU, the RX 6800 non-XT, is faster than RTX 3070 and the 3070 Ti in most cases. And do note that those cards are 8 gigabyte VRAM cards. Now, even the RTX 3080 is only a 10 gigabyte card. This one's at 16 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes is really helpful if you want to play games on higher fidelity. Modern games, as you know, is already moving towards more higher VRAM, and this will age better if you plan to keep the card for you know a long time. Developers right now are currently designing based of a higher VRAM because of the advent of those consoles like the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which hell has like access to about shared VRAM of 16 gigabytes. So yes, this will be a decent card and will probably last us for a couple of years if you're playing those single player games. And for competitive gaming, this should be fine as well. Maybe apart from certain game modes like Fortnite's performance mode, but for everything else, the RX 6800 non-XD should be fine, especially with its 16GB of VRAM boys. The RX 6800 non-XT only has a recommended power supply of 650 watts, but for our power supply, we're going to pick something with its 750 watts, and this will give us some headroom. And what we pick is a Sega Tip GM 750 watts. This one's a 80 plus gold rated power supply. It's fully modular. It also has a slot for a PCIe 5.0, you know, that Nvidia's 16 pin power connector. It comes with that one, so it can hold up to about 600 watts on that rail. And this power supply is currently at 10% off bringing the price down to $89 this is good value for money so just add this one to the cart boys and for our case we've selected a bit phoenix nova mesh micro atx argb case this is a micro atx case it's definitely not the best but it fits our budget at 65 dollars it has a mesh front comes with three addressable rgb fans which also comes with a hub so that makes things routing easier and this case can actually support up to 345 millimeters in terms of our graphics card our msi rx 6800 non xt has a length of 324 millimeters so this should be fine so to sum it up we've got the core f5 12400f a thermal right tower cooler asrock p660 board 16 gb of 3600 megahertz ram a crucial one terabyte storage the msi rx 6800 non-xt 750 watts modern power supply a bit phoenix case and this totals to $1,031.74. Let's go on to upgrade pathways. And as mentioned, we can change our CPU to these items here. You can go with a Core i5-13400F or even go all the way up to 13700K. Depending on what you need, you'll just need to update the BIOS before you do that. And you can also increase the RAM as previously mentioned. It's a good starter kit. You can move wherever you want with this kit, boys, for roughly around $1,000. This is a good starter gaming PC and you can upgrade later that track or you could just leave this as is. It's good either way. And for others who are comfortable in picking out use parts and a good alternative to our RX 6800 non-XT is the RTX 3080 use, which is really common now in the used market after the crypto crash. That card is a solid choice and we've actually done a video about the RTX 3080 10GB recently on our second channel. So click this link right here and we'll see you guys over there.